it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for your next PB&J card class and today I will be doing some watercoloring and I'll be using two Penny Black images. The first is Oh Christmas Tree, a slapstick, slapstick clean stamp and then our Tea for Transparent stamp called The Beauty of the Season. So this card was in the Seasons Greeting Christmas 2014 catalog and I've gotten a lot of questions about how it was created so I thought I would recreate it today but I mixed things up a little bit and did some different colors so it's the same technique as the other card but just using some other colors. And here's a third combination and I'll be sharing all the colors um, throughout the video and then in the supply list at the end. So to start I'm working on Canson 140 pound watercolor paper and I'm working on the smooth side of the paper. I find that the distress markers blend a little bit easier um, on that smooth side. I'm inking my stamp. Um, oh Christmas tree. This is a prototype but the, um, the real ones actually have the printing of the image on the back. I ink that with Versamark ink and then I am sprinkling white embossing powder onto the image and there's a little bit here of embossing powder that got where I didn't want it to be so I just took a little paintbrush and took off the excess powder then I took off some that I didn't want to take off so I just added a little bit more and then took off the excess and then I will heat this with my heat gun to set and then now we're ready to begin the watercoloring. So you can see that image there, um, white on white, it's a little bit difficult to see. And you really can mix up whatever colors you want to use. So this for this one, I'm going to do a red tree. So I'm starting with the worn lipstick distress marker. And I'm just coloring that around the different swirls within that tree. And then I'm going to just use water and color over the top. In this base layer, I'm not worried much about light and dark and shading. I just want to spread out that sort of base light pink layer on top of which I can add the shading. This also helps me see the image um, because it's white on white by putting this first light layer down then I can exactly see the image. What's cool about this um, this tree because it has all those swirls and sort of crevices that are created by the embossing um, the distress markers with the water kind of pool up within the different swirls and corners um, and it creates a really fun effect without you having to worry about um, creating that yourself it just kind of automatically happens so I'm going to dry that with my heat gun and now I'm going to go back in with a little bit darker color this one is barn door and I'm just adding that around some of the flourishes And then I'll go back and blend this with water. For the most part, I kind of stuff, start off of the edge or off of the color that I just put down and then move into it with the water. That way there's some wetness around the colored area for the water to bleed into. Just kind of let the water do the work. And you'll see throughout this whole video, I just keep going back and drawing and adding more until I'm happy with the result. So you just get one step closer each time. It's pretty forgiving. You can always just add more ink, add more paint, add more water um, as you go. Here I'm going to move in and do the ground because I wasn't quite sure what direction I wanted to go with the tree. So I started here with pumice stone, just colored that on and then added the water to blend. And then while that's drying, I'll go up and color the star. This is with Spice Marmalade. And you can see there where I'm starting off of the colored area and moving in with water. And then um, along the edges, I can also add more water to blend. Wanted to darken that up a bit, just right in the center of the star. And then now while that's drying, I'm going to take Broken China and color that around the tree. and then start on the white area with clean water and then move into the area that I just colored and let it bleed out on its own. And then you can add more water along those edges to help them kind of fade out into the white. Oh, and I'm so sorry, getting my head in there. Um, I'm just going in actually and adding some more shading to the tree. There, sorry about that. And this time I decided to pull in um, the color Dusty Concord um, because I wanted to, when I added that blue around the outside of the tree, I felt like I needed a kind of a cool color within the tree as well so that they 
they went like they they look like they flowed a bit so I'm just adding that dusty Concord in there to kind of tie into the blue sky around the tree blending it out with the water and now here you'll see I'm in a color with the dusty Concord marker onto my acrylic block pick up clean water and on my brush and then put it onto that acrylic block and then drop that in into the background. And what that does is it allows me to add a real diluted um, bit of that dusty concord to that background. So we're just by adding some of what's on the tree um, out into the sky in the background it ties it all together. going back here with that spice marmalade and darkening that up and then because part of that blue is still wet I can have a blend down in there I didn't want it to blend down too much though and end up with green up there either so I was careful not to let too much of that drip down so here I'm grabbing um, walnut stain adding that down along the bottom blending that and you also see often with my paintbrush I'll once I wet it down I'll just sort of tap it in there and that gives us some additional texture um, and moves that ink around a little bit more now I'm coloring onto my acrylic block with um, this color was faded jeans so I could kind of darken that up that sky in the background there you can see I'm really kind of pouncing my paintbrush um, on there and letting the water that's there blend that out um, I'm adding a little bit of that faded jeans down here onto the ground and even though you don't see that ground as blue it just ties it together again here I'm putting some of that worn lipstick into the sky just dropping it into the wet background it also kind of creates the look that the tree is glowing um, and the sky is kind of picking up on that glowing color Here I'm just adding some more water down into that bottom portion. I felt like the tree I wanted to give it even more dimension. Also warm it up a little bit so that the yellow of the star up at the top kind of was a part of that tree. So here I'm using um, fired brick and adding that in there and then blending it with a paintbrush. And you can see why the stamp is just so wonderful for this with those flourishes. It kind of just curls up the ink when it dries, those petals in there, um, right within that flourish. And I'm just lightly spreading that out throughout the whole tree. And I'm going to color that on my acrylic block, water it down, and then pat it into the tree as well. And you can see it just gives a nice overall tint to the background. This is a little bit more of that fired brick from the acrylic block. I'm also going to add a touch of that to the sky, mostly down here at the bottom near the ground. This is a little walnut stain, again, off of the acrylic block, and so it's very watered down, applying that to the background. And a little bit of vintage photo here down at the bottom. I keep wanting to darken up this um, spot here at the top so that was just more spice marmalade and then if you get a little overzealous you can always pat that up with a dry paper towel while it's still wet um, here I put a little bit of that spice marmalade down at the bottom and I did this because I wanted to give this a nice balanced design so the star up at the top and then those two bits of yellow down in the bottom corners creates a visual triangle of color um, on the card I'm also adding just a touch of that spice marmalade to the tree, pulling it off of the acrylic block. This is a little bit more of the faded jeans color, so just to darken this up. And you can see with this, it's just a matter of going back and forth and back and forth until you're happy.
So now that is dry and I'm ready to stamp my background. And this is from the Penny Black Beauty of the Season sentiment set. It's down in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to ink this up with some archival ink. So I've just picked out some inks that match the colors of the sky and the background. Um, this first one is the color of dandelion. And I'm just inking that stamp and adding in all different directions going off the edge. Then I'll clean that off and the next color I'm going to use is corn flower blue. So I'll add that going down. This is also another fun way to get more use out of your sentiments to just kind of do a random background with them. The next color here, another archival ink, is called Tree Branch. And then the final color I'm using of ink is Potting Soil, which is a nice rich dark brown. Now to finish this off, I wanted to add a little bit of snow. So I'm just taking some gesso from Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft, put it on my acrylic block, I'm adding lots of water, and then I'm going to make a big mess and just flick it onto the card. So at the first round where it wasn't too watered down, then I'm going to, you'll see I'll add more water, and then that will be an even lighter bit of snow to the background. So here's another look at that finished card. I just kept it really simple and mounted it onto white cardstock and a white note card. Here's another color variation, and on this one I used the Distress Marker colors of Spice Marmalade, Rusty Hinge, Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain, and Pumice Stone. And instead of flicking the gesso, I flicked on Walnut Stain ink. For details and more information, visit the Penny Black website, www.pennyblackink.com, and here's a list of all supplies to use. Thanks for watching. <music>